So we're going to continue on with our logistic regression notes here. So I'm, I'm at the kind of middle of page 12 in the notes currently. Um, so the next thing that we wanted to talk about before we talk about actually moving this into model building is the idea of model checking. Now depending upon what classes you've taken prior to this one, you may have done some model checking techniques. Um, so the idea of model checking, for those that have never, never done it before, is to make sure the model is valid. And so many times there's some different assumptions that we're making with our data, and we want to make sure that those conditions are actually met. And so there's ways of checking our models to make sure that they are realistic. However, knowing that having taken a prior class on model checking is not a prerequisite for our course, um, we're not going to talk about how to assess fitting our model, but I did want to make sure that everyone knows there are ways of assessing to make sure that the logistic regression model is um, a, a valid model for the data set that you're working with. Um, there's definitely different techniques compared to your regular regression because um, one of our biggest conditions we have in many other models is the idea of normality, and that's not one that's here because we are working with binary data. So we're, it's very different types of model checking than what many of you have probably seen before. Um, if you were to do model checking for our data, what you would actually have to do is first get your data in what's called explanatory variable pattern form. And what that would mean is that you have one row in your data set for each unique X. So thinking about we've, what we've actually done with this data set before, we've sort of done this when we were calculating our sample proportions for our bubble plot, is we took all of the kicks that were done at that same distance of, for example, 18 yards, found out how many of those kicks were attempted, how many of those kicks were made. Um, so that would be the idea of what explanatory variable pattern form would actually mean that we'd be working with here. But again, mainly an aside to make sure you know that there are ways of checking it. They just kind of go beyond the scope of our class here. Now, the idea for the rest of this week and the ideas of logistic regression that we're going to cover um, for the rest of this time is the idea of model building. And the whole idea of working with model building is when you want to have more than just one explanatory variable. So for example, we've primarily been using distance to predict the probability of a successful place kick. But what if you want to use distance and other variables? Like maybe we wanted to take into account that lead change variable that we had. Or maybe we would like to account for if there's wind or if it's a home game, all of these different types of variables, we might want to see, you know, could we take those into account? Now we are going to look at having multiple explanatory variables, things we will not investigate, again, because of the prerequisite for this course, is we are not going to take into account quadratic or interaction terms. So if you've never heard those terms before, you don't need to worry about them. They are not things that we're going to cover. For those of you that have heard of those terms before, you know that sometimes we need to include these additional terms to have really the best fit model. You can take those into account for logistic regression. We are just not going to be doing that here in our course. So first, just going to talk a little bit about what we're actually going to be doing and kind of why we're going to do it. And we're going to start with sort of the easiest case scenario. We're going to add just one more variable to our model. And we're going to add that change variable in addition to our distance variable. So what this means is the model that I'm going to use, again, we're losing, using logistic regression here. So we're going to be using that logit of pi of x, which again, remember, is that log odd. So it's that log of pi of x over 1 minus pi of x. And before, we just had this be our alpha plus beta times distance, and distance we called our x. Right now, I'm actually just going to put 
the term distance in here so that I know which thing I'm talking about. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another term to the model. So because I'm going to add another term to the model, I'm going to put this little one subscript on the first beta. That way now when I put in a second beta, I'm just going to call it beta 2. Because I'm going to have now two different betas, one for my distance variable and one for my change variable now. Just to recall, remember change was a binary variable. So it could either take on the value of 0 or 1. It was 0 if it was a non-lead change. And a 1 if it was a lead change if the kick was successful. So the team that was behind would now be ahead if the kick was made. So the first thing we're going to do is fit this model in R. I'm going to first talk through the code here in our handout before we actually go to R. Because there's very, very little different inside this fitted model. So again, just calling it mod.fit. This good one is still my response variable, that whether that kick was made or not. But now instead of just having distance, I have this plus change. So this is the only additional part that's put in this entire function here for me. Everything else is staying the same, my data set, I'm using the load it link function, all these extra options that I put through there. That's the only extra thing that we're getting. So when I go to R, again, I already have my data set loaded in here for me. So I can just run that model. Making sure I'd already run where I renamed my data set there real quick. Now I can run it. So now we got our new model that's taken into account both distance and change into it. I'm going to get that summary of what's inside of that. So now I'm going to go back to our notes here where I can mark up a little bit more of what's going on here. So our main place that we've looked in this output before has been in this estimate column and that's where our primary focus is going to be here at first as well. So what I have here is my alpha hat. This is going to be my beta hat 1. It's going to be beta hat 1 because it's attached to distance and distance has that beta 1 but again since this is an estimate it's going to be a beta hat 1. And the change this is going to be our beta hat 2. So I can actually use those values to write out my estimated prediction equation. So now my pi hat of x is going to be r e 2 r alpha hat, our beta hat 1, which is negative, times our distance, and then our beta hat 2, which is also negative, times our change variable. And what goes on the bottom, remember, is just 1 plus what's on the top. So a lot of times what I will do to make my life a little bit easier, which is perfectly fine for you as well, is to say 1 plus what's up there as well. So that's just how I would write my equation. But now let's talk a little bit more about these hypothesis tests that we really hadn't talked about before. So first of all, I am not going to worry about the one attached to my alpha hat. That doesn't tell me anything about my relationship between my x and my y here, so I do not care about that one at all. What I'm going to have here is two different hypothesis tests being done that have two different z's and two different p-values that I'm going to need here. 
So I want to understand first what those models are technically testing. And it's a little bit different now that we have multiple explanatory variables. What people generally think that we're testing, and we sort of are, is that the null hypothesis is that that beta i is equal to zero versus the idea of it not being equal to zero. If it was that coefficient was equal to zero, it's basically telling me that that variable is not needed. Or in a sense, that variable here is not useful in predicting the probability of a place kick. Versus the alternative would be telling me that the variable is needed or is useful. And that is, again, really the grand idea of what those things are testing, but there's something very specific that it's testing in addition to this. And it's that if all other x's are in the model, that's what it's testing. So if I go back here and look at this one for distance, and I'm looking at my p-value and my z statistic there, it is saying if I'm already using change to predict the probability of a successful place kick, is distance also needed? So let's write down this one. So if change is already being used is distance needed as well or two versus the second one would be telling us if distance is already being used is change needed too. Now, that first part of that, if this is already being used, even though it does, might not seem like a big deal, really is a big deal. It's kind of like saying, okay, if I already have these things, do I need this one as well? And the idea here is very important. Um, a good example to think about with that is, imagine that you were getting ready to move and you were trying to recruit some friends to help you move, and you know how we all are about begging our friends to help us move all that big stuff um, that we got. So imagine that you have nobody coming to help you. No one. So you have a female friend, not the strongest girl in the world. Would you want her to come? Sure. Like, right, some help is better than no help. If I have nothing, I will gladly take my 150-pound-ish girlfriend who's not that real strong to help me move, okay? That's very different than I say, okay, I already have four football player linemen coming to help me move. Do I still want my female friend who's not very strong to come help? Do I still need her? That's a very different question now, right? Because if I don't have anyone, that's very different than if I already have these four other people coming that are already much stronger. Uh, maybe I don't need her help as well. I'll let her stay home and, and maybe have her help me decorate or something instead. Like, right? That's a very different idea. And so please remember that when we're looking at these tests, it's not necessarily saying, okay, is this variable useful in predicting the probability of a place kick? It's saying, is this variable useful if I already have these other variables in my model. And again, that's a very big difference of an idea of what we're testing. So if I were to look here at both of our variables, my distance p-value is very, very, very small. So even if change is already in the model, it seems that that variable is very useful here for me. The one here for change, it's not as small, it's 0.0256. If we kind of just use maybe a 5% significance level, which seems pretty standard, I guess, by default, is it would still be less than that. Tell me that, okay, even with distance being used, change seems to be needed as well. It would be useful in predicting 
the probability of a place kick. So here it looks like both variables I would want to use in predicting the probability of a place kick. Now in the next video, we're going to talk about actually how to do the confidence intervals and what those are going to mean now that we have multiple explanatory variables in our model.